We remember that matter is any substance that occupies space and has mass and that a particle can be one of three things. The first one is that a particle can be an atom. We remember that atoms are made up of a nucleus that contains protons and neutrons and then energy levels that surround the nucleus that contain the electrons. That is the first type of particle that is the atom. The second type of particle is the molecule and we know that a molecule is just two or more atoms that are chemically combined in a fixed ratio. A common example here would be a water molecule that contains two hydrogens that are bonded to a single oxygen which gives it the formula H2O. So what the particle model of matter does is it tells us that by looking at the way that these atoms and molecules interact with each other, we can make judgments about the properties and behavior of that matter. We say that it is a model because it is something that only helps us to explain it and it is based in this case on four properties or four pillars. The first one of those is that all matter is made up of particles. Basically saying that if you had a strong enough microscope and you could zoom in far enough on any amount of matter or on any matter, whether it's a solid, a liquid or a gas, you would eventually find that it is made up of either atoms or molecules. And then the third type of particle we know is ions, which will be discussed later. So at its base, all matter is made up of some kind of or some arrangement of atoms or molecules. The second principle is that these particles are in constant motion. So whether it is in a liquid where you have a glass of water that we know contains a whole lot of water molecules, we know that those water molecules are in constant motion. They are constantly moving around and the speed at which they are moving determined, is determined by the amount of energy that they have. We know that in gases, when you have a room full of oxygen, we know that oxygen is two oxygen atoms that are bonded together, which is why it is O2. Those, because they are in gases, they have more freedom to move and therefore more energy. The one that is slightly counterintuitive is that in solids, even though the solid substance appears to be stationary, if you look at a piece of metal, you would think that nothing is in motion, but what that just means is that all of those metal atoms are very tightly packed and neatly arranged, but they are all constantly vibrating upward and downward and left and right and forward and backward and they are constantly moving and that motion is governed by the amount of energy that they have. The third principle of the particle model of matter is that there are always spaces between these molecules. Now because these molecules are so small, those spaces are even smaller, but it does mean that there is technically nothing between these molecules and when we say nothing, we are saying absolutely nothing, not even air particles. The fourth principle is that these particles are all attracted to each other. Now it makes sense since we know that there are protons in the nucleus and protons are positively charged and there are electrons in the energy levels. It makes sense that the protons in one nucleus would be attracted to the electrons in another atom. And as a result of this, we can say that all particles are attracted to each other. So these are the fundamental principles of the particle model of matter. And once you have an understanding for these, you find it easier to explain the properties of various metals and also the properties of their phases, those being solids, liquids and gases.